Hello and welcome to Western Washington History. In this video we will be discussing how why aware of the first major planned road in Washington Territory. This will take us back to 1853 as we travel the first military road from Fort Walla Walla to Fort Stillicum. Hold on, there were no seatbelts back then and this may be a bumpy ride. Washington Territory was carved out of the northern part of what was then the Oregon Territory. The Canadian and the United States border had been settled to where it is now in 1846. Efforts began right away to build roads in the newly acquired area. Those north of the Columbia River felt left out so they petitioned to create their own territory. Washington Territory came into existence in 1853. The video I made titled Fort Vancouver touches a little more on this. One of the first things the new territory discussed was the need for roads and rules to road building. Who would pay for what, the dimensions of the road, and all the other technical details. They wanted to bring settlers to the new territory. At the time, the main road, or trail as it was, the Oregon Trail, ended in Fort Vancouver with some people stopping in Oregon City. The Washington Territory proved $20,000 to survey and find the proper path for the new road. These early roads were designed for horses and horse and wagon or buggy combinations. A lot of this road followed the well-established Native American trails. In 1853, Secretary of War Jefferson Davis assigned Captain George McClellan to survey the new road as it was also a military advantage in case England decided not to abide by the treaty or if there was a native uprising. Jefferson Davis would go on to be the one and only president of the Confederate States during the Civil War. George McClellan would go on to be, at one point, the head general of the Union Army. For those that don't know, that would be the opposing side to Jefferson Davis. But the Civil War wouldn't start for another eight years. By August of 1853, a road was being built over Natchez Pass. Most of the labor for the road was done by volunteers. I use the word volunteer very loosely. The Longmire Biles wagon train was the first to make the trip on the new road, and it has a very clear account recorded for history. I will make a video on this trip, or at least on James Longmire, in the future. The wagon train crossed the Natchez Pass in September of 1853. They had to cross the Natchez River 68 times due to the steepness of the hillsides. There was anywhere from 36 to 53 wagons in the train and an estimated 175 people. Descending west from the pass, the immigrants reached the top of a steep bluff known as Summit Hill. One or more settlers offered to slaughter some of their cattle so they could make ropes from the hides and lower the wagons down. And that is exactly what they did, and they succeeded in safely lowering all the train's wagons except for one, which was smashed on the descent. James Longmire settled in what is now Yelm, and in 1883 he hiked Mount Rainier and found Hot Springs, where he opened a lodge. James Biles, the wagon train's other leader, settled in Olympia and built a tannery. In 1853, the Columbian, Vancouver's newspaper, reported the road was ready for settlers. Ezra Meeker, another settler from a whole different party, said in an interview in 1905 that reports that the road was ready in 1853 had led to disastrous results. May of 1854, a crew was sent to improve the road. They cut the crossings of the Natchez River from 68 to 44. They also improved some road grades and cleared trees that blocked the road. A report was made to Jefferson Davis in 1855. They stated they left Fort Stellicum and got to Fort Walla Walla in eight months, traveling 234.5 miles on the new road. The road used the Natchez Pass at the mountains instead of the Yakima Pass that McClellan had used when he surveyed the area. That route today is 282 miles and takes about five hours to drive. Also bypasses Natchez Pass and goes through Chinook Pass. Congress was asked for an extra $10,000 for this road in 1856. The first United States military fort called Fort Walla Walla was built that year. Hudson Bay Company had a fort near the U.S. Fort Walla Walla well before that time called Fort Nez Pierce which I believe the first settlers must have gone through before the military fort was built. Fort Nez Pierce burned in 1857. Now we know the how and the why, let's explore the where. We will start as the settlers started on the east side of the Cascades. Trails split off at the site of the Hudson Bay Fort Nez Pierce in what is now Wallula, Washington. One road headed towards Fort Vancouver, the other military road headed out of the fort and up the Columbia River until it reached the Yakima River at what is now Richland, Washington. From there, it followed the Yakima River up to present-day Yakima, Washington. There at the River Fork, 
It followed Natchez River up to Natchez Pass. There are hiking trails up there you can visit if you are the hiking type. Highway 410 covers a lot of the old trail along the Natchez River, but avoids Natchez Pass, like I said earlier, and settles for Chinook Pass. From Natchez Pass, it followed the Greenwater River to the site of present-day Greenwater, Washington. That is where some would argue its western Washington trip begins. At Greenwater, the Greenwater River and the White River meet. There is also a monument that can be seen here. Where the rivers merged, they followed the White River until it reached modern-day Buckley. From Buckley, the Sumner-Buckley Highway more closely follows the old military road. It passes close to the site of the Connell's Prairie Battle where some settlers were ambushed on the military road and killed. The road went into modern-day Bonnie Lake down El High Hill. I am going to guess El High Rim Road. Either way, they proceeded to the Puyallup River. Probably followed the river down what is now McCutcheon Road. They crossed the river just up from the present-day town of McMillan. There you can meet up with Military Road. You follow the present day Military Road down until it changes name. Then they say it followed roughly 160th. But facts are blurry in this area, at least from what I was able to uncover. The road goes past Clover Creek Elementary. There is a marker in that area. It then shows up in Spanaway as Military Road. At Pacific Avenue and Military Road, you can see another stone marker. The road followed Perimeter Road up to Woodbrook Road. The road cuts through the lakes and meets up with the last part of the road to bear its original name. In 1867, the Natchez Pass Military Road was used mostly for cattle drives for a few decades and then abandoned altogether. A new route through the Cascades called Snoqualmie Pass Wagon Road opened. The new road took people closer to the ever-growing city of Seattle and the Puget Sound area and was in better condition for wagons. The Snoqualmie Pass route would be the first automobile highway across the Cascades, finished in 1915 and called the Sunset Highway. In 1929, the state opened a new road closer to the Natchez Pass Military Road that traveled over Chinook Pass. It is now called State Highway 410. Washington Territory Military Road No. 1 was a short-lived road that didn't live up to its full potential, but was still a vital road when in operation and is an important part of Western Washington history. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Till next time, remember, today is tomorrow's history.